see. Thank you and welcome to ME501. No, wait, that's his class. It's my son in here. Um, Will Baggett, and uh, thank you for coming out. Glad we all made it here from the hurricane. And my mics aren't on, so this one on. All right. All right. All right, thank you for coming out. My name is Will Baggett. This is Mechanical Engineering 501. Um, turn your, oh wait, no, that's Will's joke. He asked me to make it before I walk in. That's my son in the front row over there. Um, title of the talk is Broken Arrow, and they're all now laughing at him, fantastic. Uh, broken Arrow, so that's the Army term back in the 60s, so if the American forces are overrun, they would send it out over the radio to ask for any and all air support in whatever means, whether it's a B-52 for blanket bombing, napalm, or even a Cessna just giving a little bit of guidance so the American troops would know which way to navigate away from the enemy. And I say that because working in the cyber field, a lot of people come to us and say, you know, I've got this situation. And before it used to be, fix my desktop, back when I'm dating myself, I realize. But back when we had desktops that people would build, aside from gamers and crypto miners, building your machine was an issue, and the common person comes to a cybersecurity person, an IT person that asked them to build it. That's now shifted from fixing things, generally laptops and phones are non-repairable, generally, ifixit.com might help. But now it's fixed my situation, whether it's I'm being gang stalked on Instagram or you know, my ex knows everything I'm doing on iMessage. You know, I think my account's been hacked. Can you come help me fix this? And that talk's relevant because here in, in Augusta between the National Lab and the things that go on over at Fort Gordon, we might be, we, like I'm still in it, but we might be the superior at building drones that go deep underground to take nuclear measurements, or we might be able to determine how many people of interest are living in a house in Pakistan based on the water draw and power draw through sources and methods. But when you leave that skiff life and come back out to your car and start to drive home, and in Georgia you can't touch your phone for however long it takes to get back into your house, that's when you truly get back into the civilian world and you might be a GS-1510 looking at something truly in depth and uh, technical, but once you get home, oh. I, again, because he's here, I didn't know you could make phone calls through Snapchat and I was a uh, comms expert for CIA for counterintelligence group. But we didn't know that because we don't play with Snapchat. And you, know, you can still learn from people. I didn't know you could make phone calls through PS4. No idea. Never thought to make phone calls because I'm an adult and I have a phone. <laughs> but you can, and you can actually stalk people and see what's going on. You, one person, she built a scraper to see how long people had been online, the amount of time they're spending on video games, and took that report to the judge to say, uh, you know, this person claims they can't get a job, but they spend 80 hours a week on Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies they can obviously get a job. So from all that, when they come to us and say, can you help us? Our inclination is to say yes, and we want to do something. So on the job, a lot of us who've seen this, you basically sign your life away, and the graphic looks a lot better on small screen than big screen. You basically say you consent to all monitoring, and then after leaving the intelligence community and working inside our threat, by God, yes, they mean they can see everything. So you've got Splunk, you can see all if it's set up correctly, which if it's not, it's a lot of money, and that's why the Splunk and engineers also have a huge salary. But you can see every bit and byte that goes to and from, all the email attachments, websites visited, then drilling down with O365, which that's not vulnerable one bit. But you can see all the email, all the Teams chats, away, active messages, all that can be harvested remotely without the end user knowing what's going on. With Druva, you can connect remotely. Previously, with, uh, before the virus, you would actually have to do dead box forensics, collect the box, image it, and then look at the data. And with endpoint software, you can now go out remotely, collect just the files of interest, and look to see, is this person a flight risk for leaving the company? Is this a counter espionage case? Are they looking to take our proprietary research and then sell it to the competitor or take it with them for a new job? And even McAfee, you can see which USB device has been plugged in, what was copied to it, and where the data went. And you can get the full pattern of life without the end user ever knowing it. But again, going back one slide, you agreed to that as part of the job. That doesn't work at home. People, 
should have a reasonable expectation of privacy, and legally they do. And I've got this in here for a pause. I gave this talk at DEF CON, and one of the, not critique, suggestion was for the short version, the TPR version, if you need resources, if you go back to the Augusta Airport, if you're flying out of here, oh, I heard this talk on escaping domestic digital abuse. The takeaways are go ask rose.com, safeescape.org. It's a collection of people like myself. There's the founders working for DARPA. Uh, people tied to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to help work to squash some of the issues people are having. Uh, if you want to volunteer, we always need more volunteers. Help at safeescape.org. Or if you know somebody who needs help, help at safeescape.org. We'll parse the email where it goes. Now this, if you've taken any cybersecurity class, you're familiar with the triad. Data confidentiality, data availability, and data integrity. I've got 100 plus slides. My old mentor did eight slides in four hours. A lot of people have fallen asleep in that class. So you lose attention after six seconds. I have a lot to cover. This is a basically a week of counterintelligence, technical counter surveillance crammed into 50 minutes. The slides are available if you want. I'll give my email at the end. Uh, but we've got this. We all know that. So from that triad, the risk mitigation principles for the domestic abuse front, you need to control the environment, be aware of identity theft, and you have to make sure you have data availability. Unlike AWS, Azure, maybe DigitalOcean, and maybe how the uh, NSA has a site out in Utah, the data related to these specific domestic cases, that's the only USB drive, that's the only hard drive you have from this. You have to make sure you make additional copies because if you lose that, the person you're helping won't have any evidence whatsoever of the abuse. But out of everything, you have to control the environment where you can. And from that, it breaks down to another three points, the personal security, the data security, and social media leaks. Personal security is obviously the most important one a horrible example, but the flight that went down, the Malaysian 317 flight that vanished. Oh, everyone's dead, but we have the black box. Doesn't matter, everyone's dead. You have to take care of yourself first and foremost. Now, cyber practitioners, this is one of the newer slides. We've refined the process at Safe Escape. You have to look for the IOCs, just like when you're dealing with a SOC environment. Why is this person, why are they concerned? How do you think this is happening? And what are the indicators of compromise? Why do they think that something is going on? And we've learned over time, improbable doesn't mean impossible. We, most of the cases are just coincidence. There's some true hacking, and we've had some black hat hackers who actually pursued the victim digitally to erase the evidence of their abuse with some zero days they burned, some unreported exploits in order to try to erase evidence and he kept reconnecting to her devices to make sure the pictures of her abuse were erased. It was a cat and mouse game. But that was a very unique situation that was one out of hundreds, but it did happen. So kind of tying this into last night, you never have to ask permission to leave a dangerous situation. Getting off the X, it means if you think you're in danger, it's okay to leave. No bad situation ever get better by sticking around. You know, last night, looking at driving down here from Charlotte, we were looking at I-77 and looking at I-20 westbound, and we'd have driven straight through the middle of the hurricane tropical storm coming over to here, or we wait till the next morning, get up early, and drive in. If I've just spent two 12-hour days worried about an O365 uh, vuln, about a remote connection vulnerability for a computer I'm never going to see, plus a new hypervisor vulnerability, again, on thoroughly dispersed machines sitting on AWS Cloud, why would I risk my personal life to drive through a storm to speak when I can just wait 12 hours? I didn't ask permission, it was just, we're going to wait. That was a smart call. Same thing, if someone's in a bad situation, leave first, make it to the next day, and then start to rebuild from there. Uh, getting off the X, again, this is a domestic abuse digital case, however, have your bug out bag packed, just like for a hurricane, if we had your wallet, your keys, important papers, baby's passports, baby's documents, baby's vaccine records, your phone and the charger because my phone both life is terrible. And you wanna keep the devices with you, but you have to consider what if they're stalkerware. Uh, some of the people, I don't like to say victims, some of the clients we've worked with have been very ingenious. One of them was a uh, vet and she kept her 
alternate phone documents and prepaid credit cards in the safe, her medicine safe in her office and said that if my ex breaks into the office, breaks into the safe, they're not just breaking and entering. This is a major felony because there's controlled substances and the police are going to respond much differently than just keeping these documents in my car. Now that said, here's where we want to split a little bit. We've got a person leaving a bad environment and then we've got, well, what if that person leaves the house, leaves the apartment, leaves the assigned housing, whatever. A couple of things. First, you want to change your passwords. That's obvious. I'm going to say that a lot. You probably want to hear it in your sleep. I'm going to say it in my sleep. You want to change the locks and codes to your alarm panels. The third one, add it in because it seems so bizarre, again, being in the cybersecurity field, there was a flap. There was. There was a flap. But you pull it down on the garage door panel to enter your code to unlock your garage and raise it. And it said, if you forget your code, do this to gain access right there on the door. I mean, username, admin, password, and right there, hard stamped at the manufacturer. That's a bad thing. If, you're, uh, if their person has a shared garage door opener with someone else, when the, when the locksmith comes out, that's something else to remember to get rekeyed. This is physical perimeter hardening, first and foremost. The police getting a phone call, this person came back into my house with a key, that's one thing. But they broke in because I changed the locks, they're going to respond much differently. Now from there, on a known safe machine and a known safe network, change your security passwords in question. Meaning something you wouldn't find from genealogy or ancestry.com or something posted on Facebook. Because it's okay to lie online. It's, okay. it's Americans, we're conditioned to always tell the truth. And for those of us who've been through polygraphs, they don't want the truth for four hours. They want it for eight hours because they get paid for the full day, but you can't say that. Wait, I did say that. So it's okay to lie. Where did your parents meet? Uga Waga Dugu. Uh, where did they get married? Tatooine. Uh, what was a memorable experience in your life? Living in a van down by the river. Something... They're not looking for the truth, they're just looking for the right answer that you've put in. It's okay to lie about this. My niece is over here laughing, oh, Uncle William told me I can lie. Yes, lie, don't tell the truth online. Except to your mom, because she knows where you live. Okay, so locksmith is coming, the apartment manager is coming, they're changing the locks. While you're waiting, look at your router, have your technical friend look at your router, and here's where I'm going to start saying capture evidence if necessary. The only things connected should be things you recognize. So here you've got a Galaxy phone, an iPhone named PC because separate conversation. If you name it Colonel Smith's phone, now you're beaking out to the top of the target list when you connect to a, uh, say, a Starbucks. Who goes to Starbucks? But you're still, oh, this guy's important to the military. Let's sniff his traffic with Wireshark versus PC phone. Who wants to look at that? So this is good. This is a normal looking network. If you see something unusual, stop, call law enforcement because if you've got a bug in the house, a remote camera, that's also a felony and as professionals, we stop, we get the uh, law enforcement involved because we don't want to tamper with evidence. You can also, if you feel like it, look at the law to see what devices have been coming and going through the network. What else is connected? What's going on? that you don't re uh, regularly see. Again, the standard disclaimer, I can't talk about every log location for every router in production, Google it. Another option would be, if you feel comfortable, if you have, your person has the time, get a new router, go to Comcast, I know, I know, go to Cox, Infinity, wait for Infinity, get a new router, get a new IP address, and some ISPs will let you set a safety phrase, challenge and response, so that if you call in, only you would know that. Take a note of what it is because if you forget it, you won't get any help. Source, trust me. Now on iPhone 6, uh, yeah, iOS 16, they've got a great new feature and this has mitigated, eliminated a lot of the intake issues we had, a lot of the stalking issues. You go to settings, privacy and security, safety check, and then emergency reset that just nukes everything that's had access to your phone and managing, managing sharing and access. You can go to lockdown mode, filtering out iMessages so you don't get fished. Shared albums, all the data that's shared, that cuts it off so it's not inadvertently leaking. 
uh, there was a, uh, there was, there was a, uh, a NATO person who had been doing sensitive site exploitation over in Iraq. Didn't know it, grateful he admitted to the class, not admit, but he had been taking pictures of sources, stuff, and things. And that family album was shared out, or that shared album was sent out to Mima, Papa, and the whole family of stuff they probably shouldn't see, probably a little bit classified, but there you go, because this shared setting, plus you don't want to take your iPhone to combat, but that's a whole different issue for another class for another day. Um, the lower versions of the iOS, iOS 15 and below, same thing, go to settings and look to see where you have dropped copies of messages. There was a case that had been ongoing for five years of what actually got me into this field. And the person's iMessage had been drop copied to her laptop, but also to the iMac left behind at her ex's house. So everything she was doing, iMessage and then her email, he was getting and then presenting as evidence as to why she shouldn't have the children. So she was going out for friends on a Friday night and getting a babysitter. She got served with uh, change of custody papers for, you know, you left the kids at home on a Friday night with an unknown person, you're not fit to be a mother. Multiply that over multiple cases over five years, re drains your resources and it's exhausting. But talking to a technical professional, here's where the leak is, let's fix it. We also ran a honeypot trap where, honestly, we. Her person and I talked offline. We went to WebMD, pulled three random diseases, channel A, channel B, channel C, we discussed, or she discussed having these symptoms. When we ascertained that this is the one that her ex-husband came and said, you're unfit to have the children because of this. Okay, we know it's this channel that's leaked out. Let's look at where it's going. That got turned over to law enforcement, CSI. I backed out because I don't want to deal with law enforcement. And Things went from there, she's got her life back. All because, again, I want to change your password. Not victim shame, always change your password if you're unsure. But something like this makes a huge difference. Part two on the iPhone. iPhone is fantastic in that you can be on your Mac, get a, a text message, and then have it propagate through all your devices. The downside is the exact same thing happens where you can forward your text messages to multiple devices. Again, if you're helping this person and see that their ex thinks their cue from James Bond and all they did was enable a toggle button and add his device, really. That's not hacking. But again, take your screenshot, call law enforcement, and then let them deal with it. But now you know where the leak is coming from. And again, you've got your Blue Force tracker in your pocket. If you're sharing your location with unknown people like Life360, something goes on and your ex knows everything that's going, it's probably Life360, Apple has this by default. Same for the shared family albums. Make sure those are disabled as well. You want to start mitigating the leak and controlling the access. Same thing for Android. You would go to recently used devices, see where you're logged in. And this was a fun one. A show of hands, has anyone used Google Takeout? All right, what does Google Takeout do? What do you mean by all? Uh, like you, you choose I would toss it, but liability. So lock pick set, thank you. Use it responsibility. Responsible. Those are your two pieces. Oh, cool. Thank you. And by everything, all, he literally meant all. We would have throwaway accounts for the troops to use at NATO. So they'd use it for two weeks in class. There'd be a week, two week, month break, reactivate the accounts, wipe them, and then we'd have them pull Google Takeout to show that here's what you did. And then two weeks ago, here's what this person did for training. And two weeks before, so that if you lost control of your Google account while you're deployed, everything is out there. Which is fantastic if it's your person you're working with has been accused of something you can pull down from the Google servers authoritatively, here's everything done, which is fantastic. Conversely, if they're looking, the X is looking for information on your person, it's still everything as well. So it's the good and the bad. Apple occasionally has this. Apple backup data, same thing, a lot more security controls, but it is the same thing. And I know that, you know, I'm picking on my son because I'm grateful he showed up, because uh, I don't get to teach my son very often. Uh, but it does, like, there was a, we got a Wonder Woman ad, like, back in 2000, because I pulled it from my account. I got a Wonder Woman game ad. 
your sister clicked on it. So it shows here are the four stats and here's the ones that she clicked on. It gets that granular for what data is actually stored. And I'm looking at time. I've got a lot of ground to cover. He broke his iPhone in New Mexico, his iPad in New Mexico. I'm in Charlotte, I'm downloading his old data because he was like eight or nine, 10, whatever. And I could tell like whatever video game he was level he was trying to beat, that granule of a full forensic backup was pulled down from the cloud to the very point where his phone broke. And Apple wasn't forthcoming with what they do forensically for backups. And that's when the light bulb came on. If I can get a full copy of this device remotely, and Apple isn't featuring this yet, how can we use that at the company for collection? Because now I don't have to go first. anyway. The amount of data that you can use to protect yourself in court or the amount of data that can be used against you, it's all the same. It depends on the optic. This one, same thing for Facebook. Everyone, some people love their Facebook. You go to account settings, security, active session, see everywhere you're logged in. There's a lot of places people that have logged in on the Facebook don't realize they're there. And we've only got 45 minutes left. I don't have time to touch everything, but literally so many places that can be logged in that people can shadow what you're doing unless you're doing that. Case in point, Georgia Tech Hotel went to use one of the shared IMACs and somebody who had their math, their PhD paper in cybersecurity remained logged into Facebook. So yeah, this is one of the holy of holies. There is a zip file on Facebook that contains, you can read as well as I can read it to you but contains records of granular details for all of your calls and text messages between you and whoever for the past year plus. Again, if you're a pro athlete and someone's accused you of doing something, you've got an authoritative source saying, here's the actual calls. Here's what's actually gone on. You can pull it from Facebook, it's authoritative. Conversely, if someone's looking for information to use against you or to say you've done something wrong, that's also there. That's why you've got to make sure that Facebook account password is changed and locked down. A little bit easier here, but going to an iMac or going to a Mac laptop, if you go to Keychain, put in the username and password if it's your laptop, you should know it. And then you go to Keychain, find the Wi-Fi password, Facebook password, Gmail, doesn't matter. And then you type in the username and password for that laptop. In clear text, you get to see the password that that person thought was there protected. So again, change the password. It's stored in so many places for your convenience. You're not even sure of where everything is. The 1% of the cases I talked about earlier, he had full physical access to her laptop. He enabled sharing on Mac. Go to settings, sharing, users and groups. Look at those two. He gave himself full remote login, remote, ma remote management, so her battery life was terrible. Everything, every copy and paste, every logon, he had a full remote SSH, so anytime she was logged on, he was able to shadow everything she was doing online. Flip side is, the, I was going to compliment him, but the person, his uh, GPG key that he left on there to activate the remote hacking was actually under his true name on root, so there's your evidence. Going further for the person, you want to go social to the accounts and look and see what's running on the logon. This one I like. I was working with a local uh, PI a long time ago. He gave me a USB drive. And this is a deleted text message saying, make sure you delete your text messages that the PI had deleted from the USB drive that he gave to me. I ran disk drill and he's able to recover that. So if you're in a contentious case, you don't want to just share a used USB, you want to use new media. The $10 you spend at Walmart for clean versus, I think it's okay, it's $10 versus data security. We talked about Facebook, helped a neighbor move a 65 inch TV, the, again picking on my son, he got a 55 inch TV for him and his, he and his twin sister Christmas a few years back. That was the second TV. The first TV your dad put in the car at Walmart and the weight of the TV kind of bent and you know flat screens are fragile being honest here yeah so that one got returned because a nice big crack down the middle so anyway person's moving a 65 inch TV left the TV behind sold on Facebook marketplace and the attorney told me they were still logged into Twitter in Facebook why someone needs to see Twitter on 65 inch TV I don't know 
but you've got to consider if it's a bad domestic situation, you have to log out of all the edge devices. Something else to consider with Facebook, uh, there's some repositories on GitHub, also on OSINTframework.com. You can take the aggregate of Facebook, IG, Instagram, Twitter, and look and see when someone's working, when they're sleeping, when they're prevalently posting, if they're posting after 5.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, and they're silent from eight to five, are they working in a skiff? Or on the other side, for the counterterrorism side, you can see, okay, this person's betting down on these hours where they're sleeping, or if you're a little bit unscrupulous, you can say, okay, Tom Brady didn't sleep well last night, I'm going to bet on the Green Bay Packers instead of the Bucks because based on the sleep cycle. Would never do that, it feels a little scuzzy to me, but that's still there, that's implied data from Facebook that's already out there. We talked about family and friends data leaking. I see a lot of this actually in the military and some of the IC of, hey, mom's going here, don't tell anyone, dad's going here. Well, if you post it on Facebook of don't tell anyone, dude, it's online. So if you're saying, you know, my daughter's under this issue, but she's going out tonight with her friends down to Frontier in Stockbridge, well, right there, now the hostile target knows they're going there. They don't have to hack anything because someone else shared the data for you. Something else, just like onboarding, offboarding at corporations, if they've had access to the Ring doorbell, well, has anyone worked with a Ring doorbell data? Anyone set one up? Nobody in the audience has a Ring doorbell? One person. What's that? Right. The camera quality is amazing. The audio quality is even better. Like, it's crystal clear. There's an accident near the house two in the morning. Police had me pull the data from the camera, and I don't have one at home. I just don't. It was superb. It wasn't like the bank videos where it's all blurry. It was like movie quality. So you've got uh, 4K video quality, and all you have to do is add someone to the access control list, but do you remember to take them off? Because now they've got someone new coming into your house. They can hear the conversations to and from the porch add that into the Alexa date model where they can go back if they have access to your Amazon account and they can go back and hear every conversation you've had, every Alexa, hey Alexa, sorry if I triggered anything. You can also, it used to be a terrible CSI cyber episode, you know, Swift on Security was making fun on Twitter way back in the day, but you can actually disable the uh, smoke alarm, burglar alarm. So if the hostile other person can have access to disable this just through your Amazon Alexa account, that's a bad thing. So you need to disable that, change your password. Same thing because as a fraud examiner, you have implied trust, implied approval, that if even though you've split and they still have access on Alexa to on Amazon to your credit cards and they rack it up, you've still left them there, you didn't remove them. That means you're still responsible for that, your person's responsible for it. Again, changing that just like offboarding at work, you have to offboard someone from all of your digital media. Same for the printers, so if they're leaving, I would say take the printer with them. Printers are relatively cheap and there's a point to this. <coughs> Sorry. At one of the classrooms over in Belgium, to demonstrate that the metadata that's left behind, we just walk over, hit print list, and you could see the travel itineraries of the soldiers is the headers. And you could go back and show and piece together based on the travel itinerary, this group is going here, that group is going there, just based on the file names printed. So again, there I was in a skiff for a partner country. Not, I don't have access, foreign national. I just walk over, did the same thing, and lo and behold, it prints every single document ever printed on that print until it ran out of paper. I looked at that, I'm like, I'm not touching that. Went and got the warrant officer to look. I was doing this as part of the class. There's all y'all's classified data, about 500 pages. I'm not touching it. And that was something they fixed. But in this world, with the potentially hostile abuser, if they have the ability to just reprint every file as a feature of the printer, that's something that's also got to be considered. On an Apple, if you've left it behind, if they've left it behind, you go a little bit more, you go into, uh, oh, you go to terminal, bar spool cups, and then you get a list of every file ever printed. The ones that start with C, you get the metadata. 
the ones that start with D, the ones is ends in 001, that's an actual PDF. So you can move, copy that PDF to the desktop and see the image of what's printed. So this is a simple strings command on that in terminal. You can see it, that one random one for this example. It was a world market coupon printed off. Big deal. But you get the example the, that there's your proof of concept. If you want to see everything ever done on that printer, that could be done on the Mac. Something else to consider of what you leave behind or that person leave behind. This is a creepy one. Email, mail, and PDF social media tracking. Superhuman. It's a marketing tool. I, yeah. It's going to let you see every time the user has opened the email, where they opened the email, and the geographic location where they opened it. That's a service they offer for money. That's cool. So when you get the emails from vendors that say, hey, we've seen you open this email four times. Are you interested in our product? That's what they're using. The way you block this is blocking the tracking pixel through a VPN. Gmail's now also added this. So if you're in sales, personally, I think it's a little bit creepy. And even better, now you've got PDF tracking, again, for sales, where they can see what pages you open on the PDF, how long it's been open, what pages you skipped, what you read, and how long you read it. So you combine the two if you're thinking of uh, business acquisition, whether you're thinking a contentious divorce, child custody case, and you can know how long it they took to read that document and when they opened it. You're going to have an insight, which again, I, I believe is thoroughly unethical. There is an easy risk mitigation for this. Print it. Done. Because if you print it, they're not going to be able to track you. We found one way to identify the beacon. Haven't been able to identify this yet on a Windows box. So you open terminal, type in MDLS metadata list. Drag and drop that, hit enter, and you're going to see that beacon pop out there. Most PDFs, most files won't have that extension pulling down the beacon to let them know how long you've read it. And if this was a classroom where we had more time, I'd have you all open your Mac, MDLS, take something from iMessage and view the file metadata, and then see where the file came from, who composed it, how long it took them to compose it, whether it was phone number, whether it was email address, and actually see the metadata. Short story, friend sent me a photo, he said, hey, I'm interested, this girl keeps talking to me online, something doesn't feel right. Same MDLS, and the photo is actually from a model website, he was being catfished. He cut contact, saved his time, but the example is still there, whether it's flip side, if you're sending that out with your GPS enabled, now the abuser can see your new location for your house, so that's something to consider. We've actually got real packet interception for man in the middle. Uh, anyone heard of this uh, informed delivery by the post office? Anyone used it? Okay. No problem, right? Only two ways to know that if what you get, I won't get ahead of myself, you get a PDF or JPEG of the incoming mail. So if someone has signed you up for it, they can see if you have a check, something important coming, they can take that document out of the stack of mail. You've got the rest of the mail and a Bed Bath & Beyond coupon that never expires. You've got that, but you don't know the key check from the government's coming. The two steps, I went to the Postmaster General. Well, it's not that big of a deal. I went to the Postmaster General in Fort Mill, South Carolina. I was in line, I'm just curious. The only two ways to identify this risk is to ask in person at the post office if it's been enabled for your account or to try to sign up for it yourself and it would tell you it's already been signed up. Fantastic if you're TDY PCS overseas and want to know what's coming home while you're deployed. But for the domestic abuse, this is another vector where you have true packet interception. Another case where we've seen is the iCalendar. If you forget to remove someone from shared iCalendars, you want to see what's going on, as well as for your travel schedule. So that can definitely disrupt you. The same for your social media account. You go to tinfoleak.com and you can see the person's using an iPhone, which would give you the vector to say, hey, this is iMessage, click here to verify your account. So it's something else to consider. Do you really need to be on social media during a contentious event? You can spoof your GPS location. I actually was in the back of the classroom at NATO. I was posting from Dar es Salaam, Mogadishu, and uh, Iran. That was just to show some things on your recon are accurate, some things aren't, so don't believe everything you see online. 
uh, the GRUG, G-R-U-G-Q, says use signal, use Tor, I say assume everything is compromised until you've reset it. From the new Star Wars series, never carry anything you don't control. If you've not got this locked down and secure, if you person thinks they're being stalked, use personal meetings, just like old style Russia house tradecraft. Bricks and sticks, personal meetings, leave your electronics somewhere routine and secure. If you go to Planet Fitness, leave your phone there, walk next door to the coffee shop, have your meeting with your family, with your attorney, whoever, it's going to beacon out that you're still at Planet Fitness when you're actually having a meeting. You'll have the chance to arrange nonverbal paroles. In my case, it would be posting a picture of yourself wearing a rival team's shirt. So if you ever saw me online wearing a Georgia Bulldog shirt, send lawyers, guns, and money, it's gone bad. People would know I've never done that. Uh, very quickly, iPhone monitoring. I'm, uh, the biggest one we've seen at Safe Escape is mSpy. Where if A has B's username and password, they give it to mSpy. Here's a lot of ifs. You have to sync up connected to Wi-Fi while powered in. mSpy connects your entire device to the cloud, gives A and report as what you've done. That's not hacking. That's just having your password. The more malicious one is the Android, where you can create a custom phishing link. The target clicks on it, and then mSpy begins hoovering the data down. Again, change your password. Reset your device. We've seen it working over WhatsApp where a fuzzy picture of puppies was sent. The target clicks on the picture and it loads malware. That's a more esoteric case, but it is out there. So change your username, change your password. One thing for trapping your device, a program called Sleep Cycle that lets you put it on your mattress and you can see how well you sleep. That's cool, but that would also tell you at 4 a.m. my phone's been picked up and tampered with and put back down. That's Form 95, I think, for the program. But now, Apple has your battery health is a cycle that cannot be reset unless you reset the whole phone. So if at 2 AM, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook are open when you've been sound asleep, that's going to let you know something's gone on with your phone. Your person is compromised, and you're not spending any money or millions of dollars on the government program for tamper awareness. Same I just made that up. Oh, it would be over here, I'm sorry. Uh, right there you can see the date and the time under battery, 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 6 a.m. And you would see what apps are open at what time when you click on the time. So if your mom wants to make sure you're not on Snapchat with your friends at three in the morning, then that would work. Conversely, that's a, everyone's looking at the 16 year old in the audience. Um, but that's a way to know that your person's going through the phone, thank you, or someone's tampered your phone, or you, left, you leave your bag in the hotel room while you're overseas, and this would let you know your phone has been moved and tampered with while you're, which might mean either the maid was curious or there's someone looking for your stuff. One trick, we, not trick, on a Mac, if you hit Command R, if you think your phone is, uh, laptop is compromised, Command R, it gives you a startup option to boot from a protected environment. No key loggers, no VPNs, no Grammarly, just the absolute value of a clean OS. And then ironically, you go to get help online where you could access email that people wouldn't have access to because of trackers on your phone or your, excuse me, on your laptop. So if someone comes to you and says they found a device, they think they're being tracked, we're getting more into the NSA, DSNT, total access style tracking that civilians have access to now. The fun thing is the devices that before took painful and hard cable coordination between the field and headquarters to get access to the device, these are now things you can order off of Amazon. So here's a power charger, not my video. Put the SD card in, plug it in, put the face plate back over it. You've got audio video. Downside is someone's going to have to watch the video, process the take, and listen to it. And that's a lot of free time, and no one's ever said, oh, they stalked me, so I, I went back to them. Like, it doesn't gain you anything. It's terrible. As for a nanny cam, possibly, but in a domestic situation, that's a hard no. The limitations of electronic surveillance devices, if you have continuous collection, you're going to need AC power. And if you have continuous collection with AC power, 
it means your storage is going to be either limited to the device, which means someone has to physically come and collect it, or it's going to connect to Wi-Fi, going back to the uh, router we saw at the beginning of the talk. So if it's got limited collection, limited power, they're going to have to service it, change the batteries, change the SD card. Again, photos from Amazon. This alarm clock uh, is Wi-Fi enabled, has a 1080p camera and audio collection. So if there's a strange situation, your person's come to you about and you see this is plugged in, that's a pretty big clue. There's a surveillance device. I would leave the house, call the police, let them deal with because again, that's a major felony. That's not something you would want to deal with. Just point the police out, let them deal with it. But the other devices are more the Amazon Blink camera just to drop in the living room. It's pretty obvious what it is, but you could still change the housing, make it a surveillance device. That would still have to go back through Wi-Fi, connection to the device. If you don't recognize on the router log, there it is. Uh, that is a 128 gig USB drive. You flip the switch up, it's continual recording. You flip it down, it's first recording only when it hears something. The battery's good for about a week. Downside is processing the take. Does anybody want to sit through 120 hours of audio? No hands? No takers? For one thing, if it's collection of a foreign adversary of, you know, troops are moving here, here's our nuclear secrets, that's one thing. You may be able to run that through classified AI, but the inflection given for a domestic case where that'll never happen versus, oh, that'll never happen. AI is going to miss that, so somebody would have to physically process that. So even though it's there, you've got to think, does the adversary have time to truly process the take? That's a 720p camera built into an air freshener. Limitations are storage and battery, meaning someone's going to have to come back into the residence and change those out. Anybody guess what's coming next? What's that? No, not air tag, no, no. Yeah. Because when the kids go from parent A to parent B's house and they take their favorite teddy bear, we had a, where the teddy bear is behind mom and the teddy bear is shoulder surfing usernames and passwords. Because it has SD card, camera, and batteries, which every teddy bear needs, right? No. Again, that's again completely illegal. It's a nanny cam, sure. If you want to have it in the newborn's bedroom watching to make sure they're sleeping. Just get a regular camera, they're babies. You don't have to go through James Bond level just to watch your kids. The next one is good for the right environment, but it's terrible for collection as a domestic, so something else to consider. The Apple AirPods paired with a hearing aid feature on your phone. You can leave your phone in a room, put the AirPods in, and then listen to the conversation around the phone even though you're upstairs completely unethical, and I really don't want to know what someone's saying about me if I'm out of the room. I'm just not emotionally strong enough to hear, like, the person I truly love is running me down. I'm not good with that. Like, yeah, whatever. My cooking's terrible, but I, we'll say it's good. It's fine. The same thing for the Bose headphones. We had somebody reverse engineer these so that they could actually serve as a microphone because you have the active listening microphone. Again, esoteric case, but the one person did that. Again, dude, if you're going that far, to watch what your person's doing, it's over, move on. Tinder's free, Hinge's free, I don't know what you kids date on. If, it, if it's Clemson Sheep Harmony, I don't know, but just like, no, that, it's impressive, but don't go that far. Same thing, if you're on the phone, you've got one ear pod and someone else is listening to the second ear pod and you don't know it, probably a little bit over the line, something else to consider. Amazon offers tracking device that goes in a Pelican, little bitty Pelican case under the car, looks like an old 2G antenna, where you can track your spouse or person or whoever. You have to have physical access to change the battery. And this is what, it, uh, I lied, that's not from a beacon, that's a GP, that's a image of an iPhone that I scraped the geolocation from a location, I think it was Twitter, but that's actually GPS stored from Twitter. So. Your devices are always speaking if you have GPS enabled. Plus, that's a cool KML file I just want to show off. But you have to watch what your Blue Force tracker, these things will give away your data if you don't control it. Uh, there is a Strava issue where classified locations overseas were beaconed out by Strava Fitbits. If you're concerned about, if your person's concerned about being stalked, don't wear one. 
Problem solved, easy. It's like, don't wear the beacon if you think you're being followed by your beacon. All right, right, it's too much, I'm gonna go get a nice, thick Chicago deep dish pizza, right? No, because base, uh, Domino's stores two years of your history of where you've ordered pizza and delivered. So if you get pizza every Thursday night, you go to a new place to get away from the abuse of X, and you don't change this password, now your ex knows you get pizza every Tuesday night, and you haven't cleared this, you've just given your location away. I wouldn't do that, I go to the gym, I'm a gym rat. Well, Planet Fitness also tracks all of your logins, so you've got to go for the low hanging fruit because if you don't change all of the passwords and the person's wondering how they're being tracked, the myriad of ways that it's out there that you're unaware of, you've got to consider the whole picture. Because most stalkerware isn't magic, it's Agatha all along. Apple, Google, Amazon, telecommunications, and home access. Got to change the usernames and passwords. One of the issues, transitioning from the control of the environment to identity theft, we see this a lot. Identitytheft.gov, it's one of the few government get websites that's actually well done, well read, and efficient. The fraud triangle, you have, I'm gonna divorce this person, I've done so much for them, they haven't given me my fair share, I'm going to lose half my three quarters of my income. I've got pressure, rationalization, opportunity, I have access to all the documents. And as a certified fraud examiner, that's the triangle they teach us of the conditions where someone would steal financial issues. Add in the uh, spoof card app, where if you know the SunTrust phone number is 404-230-5555, it's gonna show up on your phone as SunTrust. You can spoof that call where it beacons out as SunTrust, as Planet Fitness, as Bank of America, whoever, and you've got the implied trust because it looks accurate, your person has to be aware that this would be a vector of identity theft and they have to watch what they're saying. So you go to identitytheft.gov, click on the link, start the case, you get a case number. If you go to the police, they're going to send you here as well and that gives you a case number where you can start to stop, start to stop, is that right? The fraud that's going on. Again, it's either by, either there's identity theft and fraud or there's not, pretty simple to deal with. If it is, report it. If it's not, cool, move on from there. Last bit, data availability. We would say in CIA, if it ain't in cable traffic, it ain't, but if it's not documented, it doesn't happen. When you're going through all of this and you're looking at the files and helping this person get out from what's going on, uh, this is a, from disk drill. Good luck remembering which file is which. You've got to document the source, trust me. No, 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 no. Don't want to do that again. Find an interesting file, I'll go back to it and take notes when it's happening, make copies, share it out because you don't want to duplicate work. Create that timeline. You've got to document things with authorities as they happen. And the other is not to be all mushy, but you've got to be available because if this person's come to you for help and they call and say, hey, I'm going through a rough time, let's meet at your pie and get pizza tonight. Yeah, it, they're going through a lot, you've got spare time, why not? Be a decent person. The old PACE plan for the data that you found, the screenshots, everything else. You've got a primary copy, an alternate copy, a contingency copy in emergency. So you've got the primary, that might go in a safe deposit box. The alternate copy, and contingency might be the two you're working on, and the emergency might be stored with your friends over in Ugawagadu, I don't know. But that way you've got geographic disbursement of this sole source of data. That way when they have to go before the judge, go before attorneys and say this is what's happened, you've got redundant backups because you don't have AWS to bill, bill you for what's going on. A Couple of things as we're wrapping up here. The end game for this as your person's escaping, when we would close out a sensitive or a human asset, and even though they might be fantastic and they might be terrible, you don't tell them that, you don't build resentment. It's, hey, you provide a lot of good information, you've helped us achieve our gains that we had mutually together, you wanted to help stop this regime's oppression of this group, we've achieved that, your data went to the president, he probably didn't go to the president, but it went to the president, he took action on it, and you know, Here's, we'll take that old laptop back, let's copy your data out, let's give you a new laptop, and here's an extra bonus for your time, thank you so much. You've effectively terminated the relationship, you've got your stuff back, they've got cash, they've got a new laptop, their ego's been stroked, they're happy. And this world, it's, I want my own cell phone plan, I don't want them to know who I call, I don't want them to know what's going on, 
But if you say that, it's an adversarial issue. It's, hey, I've got a great new cell phone plan through work. I've signed up for it. I know money's tight right now. And that's going to help save us some money. It looks like you're doing a benefit. But what you've actually done is taken your data off of their plan so they don't get the insight, the metadata for everything you're doing or they're doing. Same outcome versus I don't want you to see who I'm calling. Well, that's a red flag versus being a little more persuasive about it. So there's this movie called Star Wars. It's about this domestic conflict. Um, there's, these two store, there's these two androids. One of them had strong encryption, strong authentication. And the other had weak encryption and was white. But the data had just been deleted. You run disk reel, you run an undeletion. Oh, wow, Anakin's actually gone bad. And he, Star Wars is over in about 20 minutes with the right uh, forensic technician, right? Same thing to keep in mind, unless you're sure that it's truly locked down, maybe get a new device, maybe get a new USB drive, maybe get a new laptop, just to make sure. Bring it forward a little bit, unauthorized devices on a network. I can't say it, this is a good movie, but dating it. When Thanos saw that Nebula showed up, he had an unauthorized device on his network, he performed live memory forensics, did an extraction of her memory, did a takeout analysis of her location, chat, and images to find out what the opposition was doing, which is pretty fantastic for literally blue team operator working kind of with the sock, maybe. But that remains. Conversely, the Avengers didn't know that one of their devices had fallen in the adversary's hands and everything that they thought was confidential and secure had been leaked out. So you want to make sure your device is not being cloned to somewhere else. A couple of things we've had to remind folks at Safe Escape, nobody has unlimited resources. Today's October 1st, start of the fiscal year for the government. Anybody who yesterday was scrambling because they're out of budget, now is a flush new budget for the next 12 months. Regardless, unless you're at the Fed Reserve, but most people don't have unlimited resources. Occam's Razor, anybody want to guess for that? All right, the simplest answer is the best. And who will process the collection? Just because someone says it's possible, oh, they're listening to all my phone calls all the time. Well, how? Let's talk about that. Let's get to the, why do you think that's happening? Because oh, everyone's following, okay. Whereas gang stalking may be a thing, having a full-blown surveillance team watching you 24, 7, 365 is an amazing amount of resources and gasoline. I drive a Jeep, gas is not cheap, and I'm not going to just drive around 24, 7 to follow somebody for, why? For no money? what? That's not going to happen. So the short version of all this, of 102 slides, change your passwords. If your person thinks something's going on on a clean machine, change the password, change your locks, report the events as they happen to law enforcement, document everything, because if you don't document it, it didn't happen. It's my Twitter handle, my email, if you go to mail.com, you can, there's 200 different domains. If you're looking for it, rather than having AOL, Gmail, or whatever else, you can get an engineer.com, consultant.com, just to help you stand out, and it's free. But that's it, and remember, if it's probably not hacking, it's probably Agatha all along. It's probably Amazon, Google, Facebook, it's probably access to one of those. So with the next last minute left, any questions? Yes, sir. That's slick. Is that working? Yeah. All right. So I've got two. Uh, the first one I'm going to kind of quick because I can talk to you after. Um, you spoke at the beginning about uh, volunteers. Yes. Uh, can you go to three links of those? Look at three links and um, are there any other options? I'm sure there are. Uh, but you can share them in uh, quickly. Uh, the second question was um, when you're talking about leaving devices in certain locations when you're doing you know, meeting with lawyers and stuff like that, um, I've seen these devices. Uh, well, one, the, the two links, geez, I feel like Jim Pisaki will circle back. Uh, first, it's goaskrose.com, safeescape.org. And then to get help as a volunteer or as an incoming client, it's help at safeescape.org. Second, the Faraday bag, one will drain your battery. Uh, two, then you're going to disappear from the network, so you've got a gray spot where you're not truly there. So pick your poison. Do you want to either trust the device is going to be secure or 
leave it somewhere in pattern, say if you work at one of the secure sites, and you leave it in a locker or whatever people might do there, and take your car drive somewhere else. So pick your poison, but. All right, amazing talk, I'm so disturbed.